fucking Ronaldo. What's going on, guys? It's Voodoo51292 here. Um, it is a weekly ritual. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and date it for the day I'm recording this, which is uh, Sunday, June 22nd of 2014. But this video is not going to go live until Monday. Um, just because I... It's, it's late in the day, and uh, with my slow internet, it won't be up till Monday. But anyway, I am filming this on, on the 22nd, and if you've been following the World Cup at all, uh, the United States in particular, um, especially today, uh, you will have got... Hold on, let's say that. That was weird. It was like dust on my camera, but it looked like a big scratch, but it was just a hair. Um, then you would have understood my, my intro today, um, you know... To quickly catch you up, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the USA had a, a match today against Portugal in the World Cup. Had we won the match, we would have um, advanced from the group stage of the World Cup into the next round uh, of 16 teams before we even had to play Germany on Thursday, so we wouldn't even have cared about that game. And uh, we, were winning, we were winning 2-1 to one, um, after time had basically run out, but we were in added time. Um, for injuries and stoppages in soccer at the end of each half. Uh, there's 45 minute halves, but at the end of each they add um, a certain amount of minutes on the end of the half for how, however long they had to stop or do stuff during the match. Today they added five minutes and we were at four minutes and 30 seconds of added time. Um, if we just held on for 30 more seconds we would have been through and then with 30 seconds to go, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the possibly the best soccer player in the world, puts a beautiful pass in in front of our goal, and um, somehow they let this guy get behind them um, from Portugal, and he heads it in, and they score, and uh, that was basically the end of the game. So we wound up tying Portugal, which means that um, we have to do. There's a bunch of scenarios that could play out on Thursday against Germany, but more or less. Um, we actually have to try to um, try to win or tie against Germany on Thursday instead of just saying, you know, just taking the game off because we're not through yet. So it was kind of a disappointing end to what I thought was a really, really good match and a really, really um, good performance from the U.S. I think we've been showing in the World Cup this year that we can compete at the highest level of international football and. I, you know, I really enjoyed the match. It sucked how it ended, but at least we got one point from it, and we'll go from there. But anyway, on to YouTube, the channel, this week. Um, as far as uploads go this week, I uploaded another round of Dark Souls 2. I'm up to, I believe, part 34. Uh, I'm going to have to actually re-upload part 33 because, for whatever reason, it didn't process. It never processed past 360p. It got stuck there, and there's no thumbnail generated for it, so I'm going to have to re-upload it so that I can get it in 720p. Um, so I'm up to part 34 now of Dark Souls 2, so I'm about a third of the way uploading through the game. Um, and I also filmed Voodoo's Mailbag episode number 3. That's right, I was able to, uh, to film the episode, had tons of questions that I was able to answer, and really enjoyed doing the episode. And... Um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, so I put that up this week. Um, now, as far as what I'm doing currently, what's going on moving forward. Um, currently, as far as playing games for YouTube, I am currently basically in limbo. I am just biding my time, waiting for something to play. Now, admittedly, I have Wolfenstein. I did start Wolfenstein several days ago. I have not picked it up since that day I played it, because again... From what I played of Wolfenstein, it was okay. It wasn't any. I wasn't. It's not a game that's like I'm. I'm dying to go back and play more of. Again, at this point, I'm not saying it's canceled like Watch Dogs is. Um, I do intend to go back and play it again, but I just haven't had the urge recently to go play it. And um, again, I'm uploading that Dark Souls 2, so I would just be playing it and backlogging it. Um, and really, there's not too much else right now to play. Um, what I've been doing is I've actually been going on Steam every day. They're having their big Steam summer sale. Um, I've picked up one game so far on the summer sale, and actually, it's three games I've already I already own. 
I, it was just kind of weird, but basically, they had the Bioshock triple pack on sale, which was all three Bioshock games, and as you know, Bioshock is my favorite franchise. They had them all three for 10 bucks, and I said, well, you know, not only do I love the games, but I really would like to pick them up to see them on the PC, because I'm still in the, in the phase of testing the PC, seeing what it can handle, seeing what it looks like, and I said, you know, I want to play some of these games. You know, three of my favorite games would be really awesome to have them on the PC if I want to play them again um, and to see how the PC handles the game. So I've actually been playing Bioshock Infinite again the past couple days. It's my third time through the game. Um, I'm about halfway through it now uh, again. And just a PC benchmark, I can tell you, it runs Bioshock Infinite on ultra settings. So obviously that's completely maxed out at 1080p and 60 frames a second for the most part. Now there's some points where, um, like during, you know, pre-rendered animations or cutscenes or something, it'll drop to 30 frames, but for the gameplay, you know, in combat and everything, it's all 60 frames a second. And I can tell you that there is a noticeable difference in graphical quality between the PC version of it on Ultra and playing it where I played it, which was on the Xbox 360. It looks like I'm playing it on what you would expect if they ported it to next gen, like if they ported Bioshock Infinite to the PS4, that's what it looks like running on the PC. And maybe you don't really notice that difference. If you look at a video on YouTube, you wouldn't really notice the difference side by side. But once you get in front of it and play it, you notice that there's a difference. It's much, it's much more um, detailed, obviously higher resolution, and um, the game looks beautiful. It runs smooth as silk. So again, for a gaming PC that I guess you could consider with the parts in it would be middle of the road right now for a gaming PC. You can say that, but it runs games like Bioshock Infinite completely maxed out exactly how you would want it to run. And again, I only have a GTX 760, I don't have a 770, I don't have a 780. I have a 760, which you would say is middle of the road right now for gaming PCs. It handles those games fine. And like I said, I could play Watch Dogs on high settings. So. I'm really impressed with the PC. Um, the games look gorgeous. I'm excited to play Bioshock and Bioshock 2 again on the PC to, to see the graphics, um, to experience three of my favorite games in, an, in a graphical quality and everything that I could never experience on the console. So that's what I've been doing. I have my eyes open. Um, right now, I think that there's a vote going on for the next flash sale, and the package that I voted on has... Um, De Deus Ex Human Revolution, a game that I've always kind of wanted to play, uh, would be on sale for 5 bucks if it goes through. Also, Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, which, again, I've already played through Fallout New Vegas and ha played the DLCs, but it's going to be on sale for 6 bucks if this Flash Sale wins, which I think it will, because the games it's up against aren't anything big. Um, so, I probably, I don't know, I probably wouldn't get Fallout again, but I might get... Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, because that's a game I actually, I played a little bit of, but never fully played. So that's what I've been kind of doing on the PC, with nothing really to play on console. Um, now, uh, some stuff that might be coming up that I might be doing, alright? Um, my friend Dave is coming over on Tuesday, which is the plan right now, and... Um, I think he's going to be bringing over his Nintendo Wii U. Now, he was here last week, and we played Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and I really enjoyed it. I love Mario Kart. Um, I used to play it all the time on Nintendo 64. Mario Kart 8 is a lot of fun, and what we might do is go ahead and actually do some co-op footage of Mario Kart 8. Um, it would be my first, obviously, ever Nintendo footage, um, but it would be just something fun for the two of us to do. Um, we were talking about doing some of the Grand Prix on like 150cc and just having fun with it. And uh, so we might be recording that footage and that, I, that might be something fun to upload to kind of offset Dark Souls 2. And um, that could be a lot of fun. Also there's another game coming out, I think it's this week if I'm not mistaken, a game called Valiant Hearts. Um, it's running on the UbiArt framework, which is the same thing that Child of Light ran on. And this is that game, if you watched E3, that was mad depressing. It was it had that commercial about the it was the trailer with the dog, and they were talking about World War One, and um, that's what the game's about. It's coming out this week, and it's a game that I'd like to check out. I don't know if I'm going to buy it right on release because it is fifteen dollars, which is a little hefty. But 
Um, I might wait a couple days, see what the reviews are like on the game. If people enjoy the game and say it's a good game, I might be checking out Valiant Hearts. I think it's called Valiant Hearts The Great War is the full name of the game. I might be checking that out and playing it. So those are things that might be coming up. Again, I'm just looking to try to get through this summer until the fall when the new games come out, really. And um, so, you know, we're kind of biding our time right now, just to be perfectly honest. But Dark Souls 2, obviously, is going to continue to upload. The internet here is killing me. I mean, I knew it would be a massive drop-off from the apartment internet. The upload speed here is atrocious. It kills me, man. It's terrible. And, you know, I can't... I've been downloading Bioshock and stuff during the nighttime here. I can't download Bioshock and upload at the same time. I'll cancel each other out and nothing will get done. So that's why I only am, I'm up to part 34 on uh, Dark Souls 2, honestly. So, um, but, you know, I'm trying my best. And we'll, you know, we'll continue to chug with the uploads and get them out. When I can get them out, okay? Um... Other sort of side note I'd like to make here, because um, I would just like to get this on record, is that um, if anybody remembers uh, a, a guy by the name of Dead Ryu Crew 15, there was all sorts of drama that went on with us. He was a guy that I was in contact with for about you know a year and a half or so, and um, you know he he basically he was a fan of my channel, and we and he contacted me and wanted to have sort of a more of a relationship, I guess, of talking and stuff and being friendly. And so we were in contact for a lot, for a long time. And all during this time, he would, um, he would tell me all these outrageous stories, these lies and stuff, I guess in an attempt to, to try to get me to be impressed with him or to try to make himself look good or whatever. But it was all just, you know, it was a bunch of nonsense. And I knew it from the beginning. I knew all this stuff, but I went along with it. Um... Because the guy was like 15 years old and, and, you know, 14, 15 years old. as a young guy, and so I just went along with it, whatever. And then, basically, he, he had made a video several months ago where he came out completely out of the blue, mind you, and um, made a video calling me out and, and saying all kinds of really nasty, mean stuff to me. Just, you know, out of nowhere. Um, I guess in another attempt to try and basically make himself look cool or whatever. And uh, I took major offense to it because I had been so nice to him and had let all the lies and the deceit and all just go and not make a big deal out of it and just been nice. And then he wanted to make that video. So I made a video myself that was entitled, you know, Rant Time, Dead Ryu Crew 15's Tirade or something along those lines where I basically called him out. I called him out on all of his lies. I exposed what he was doing. I exposed the fact that he was using a sub for sub program. And, oh, let me check my video time. And, uh... And had, you know, and basically exposed him on all that stuff. And uh, it apparently, you know, and really, I wanted to do that one to let out my anger and frustration. Because I was angry that somebody I had been so nice to would lie to me that whole time, number one. And then when I let it go, then come out and make this video. And number two, I honestly kind of wanted to impart a life lesson. Because this was a young guy, and I wanted him for his sake to know that you can't treat people that way. You can't lie to them, lie to them, lie to them, lie to them. And then when they're even nice through that, when you want to call, you know, make a video like he made, calling me all sorts of these bad names and stuff, I wanted him to know that in life, you can't do that. You can't do it and get away with it. And, and, and I wanted to make sure that he knew that I was not going to be a doormat. I was not going to be walked all over and treated like that. And I wanted to let him know that in life, you can't do people like that. It's not right. And you better be willing to accept what you can dish out. And apparently the video I made made an impact because he kind of went off YouTube for a long time. Um, at some point he came back with a new channel kind of under the radar. I didn't know about it. Um, his new channel is called Insanely Smooth with a V. I guess going off of another one of his idols. Um, I think the guy's name is Chris Smooth or something. Like pretty popular on YouTube. But anyway... He came back, made that channel, and then he left a comment on uh, Voodoo's, uh, what was it called? My, my question series for Voodoo's Mailbag. He left me a question. The question he left um, was kind of a, a shocking, surprising one, so I went and checked out the channel, and sure enough, I found out it was him. I reacted violently toward it. 
Um, I probably maybe shouldn't have. I probably should have just let it go. But I acted sort of violently, said some more choice words to him and and all that. And kind of called him out, actually, on my Voodoo's Mailbag episode 3. Um, but if you'll notice when you watch that, there's a jump cut. And that's because I edited that out. And reason being for all that is more or less he came out on his channel after this incident with Voodoo's Mailbag. And made a series of videos where he basically came out and admitted to all the things. Well, he admitted to, to some of the bigger lies that he had told me. Um, which obviously wasn't news to me. I already knew that they were lies. But he admitted to them. There were still several things that... Um, I, I'm, you know, almost 100% sure were deceitful that he didn't admit to, such as owning his own two-story house at age 15. Um, but, you know, letting all that go, he did admit to, to some stuff that, uh, you know, a lot of the bigger lies he had said and, and apologized. Explained why he made the rant video calling me out is because another person that he liked on YouTube was known for these rants, and so he decided to try to be like him and make these rants, and so I think this guy's big problem is he's just trying too hard to be not himself. Um, but more or less, he made the videos admitting what he did wrong, apologized, and all that. And that's all I was looking for. So more or less, I contacted him. He he, he has gone through some rough things um, in his lifetime that, that he did talk about, and I do believe him. I don't think he has any reason to lie about the things that he was talking about in his videos, about his girlfriend passing away um, from cancer and uh and all that and that's that's rough obviously i mean that's that's tough stuff and so um you know i apologize or I, i'm sorry to him that he's had to go through these things um obviously you know that's that's a tough thing to try to get through but um but anyway he apologized he admitted what had happened and so i contacted him and said that i appreciated it that it that it took um guts for him to get on camera and not just to me but publicly on his channel to admit to the things he had done and uh you know he did admit to using sub for sub and did admit um that he had no interest in buying my camera and and some of the other things again which i already knew but it was nice for him to step up and admit that um and sort of and to be a man about it and that's how you have to do it when you screw up in life you got to admit it so I appreciated it, and basically we're we're on okay terms now. You know, I I made the video that uh, that I, I made calling him out on private, so it can't be seen anymore. And uh, so you know, if he does leave a comment or something, and I answer him, or I'm you know doing this, and people are confused, like why is all of a sudden everything cool after that huge explosion that happened between them? That's why. Okay. Um, and if you want to see those videos where he admitted again, his channel is uh, it's called Insanely Smooth S. M O O V E again, like the YouTuber Chris Move, and uh, and he has um, videos. Uh, you know, there, there, there's something called like Smooth Revealed or something like that, and you can watch those videos and see for yourself that he admits most of this stuff. So that's sort of the deal. Um, I made it perfectly clear to him though that he better not lie to me again, and that honestly he's not a very good liar so don't try it because it's going to be obvious to me if he's lying and if he does it again to me then i'm done i'm completely done i mean like i said i feel bad for the things he's had to go through but you know that's no excuse to lie and lie and lie and then give you a second chance and then do it again so i made it perfectly clear to him that if there's any more lies or deceit or, or anything like that then it's over i'm done with it i i'm i'm more than happy to give people second chances when they admit that they screwed up but that's about as far as I will go. I'm not one of these persons that people, persons, not one of these people that gives chance after chance after chance after chance because, again, I'm not a doormat. So, um, best of luck to him in dealing with the things he's had to de go through. Hopefully, um, there's some growth and maturation there with him, and hopefully our whole experience has taught him something about dealing with people in life and how to be a man and step up and admit uh, your mistakes. You know, and I realized, I mean, I was nowhere near perfect when I was 15, 16 years old. I mean, I was not nearly the man I am today at 22 that I was then. I mean, that was a point in my life where I, too, was trying to fit in with people and trying to really be somebody I wasn't to try to get in with people because I'd always been a nerd. I'd always been made fun of and never had any friends growing up. And so 15, 16 in high school was the time that I was really trying to be somebody I wasn't and... um 
And really that was sort of the tail end of that. And around that age is when I started to sort of stop doing that and sort of started being me. And, uh, and, and sort of, you know, more or less became who I am today. And I'm a lot happier that, you know, I'm, I'm in a much better spot in my life now that I decided to just be who I am instead of trying to be someone I'm not and trying to impress people all the time because it doesn't work. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so we're, we're on, we're on better terms now. So that's the deal with that. And, um, oh, one more thing. Another video I might be posting at some point is, um, I might be doing an official tour of my room here because you've seen different angles from this room, but I've never actually done a tour of this room. And since I moved back in here permanently, well, at least for the next four years, I'm going to be living here. Um, and all my content will be from here. I want to give you guys a, a, a full tour of the room. You know, now that I have the new desk in, I've met, moved my bedside table to the other side of my room and uh, show you guys how it looks. It looks sort of kitty now because it looks the same way it looked when I moved back, when I moved to this room when I was like 10 or 11. It's got the, you know, the kitty sports banner. I've got shelves up, but I've got like my kids sports trophies and stuff like that up. I'm planning to actually do a massive renovation of this room at some point. I want to do uh, all new paint. I want to get rid of the... I want to do a whole new, you know, paint job, get rid of the kitty sports border. And on all my shelves and everything, I actually want to replace my old kids trophies with some more of my adult stuff. I have a, a, a growing shot glass collection that I've been working on. Uh, I'd maybe like to put that up on a shelf. Um, you know, some things I got uh, like a mortar and pestle, you know, I'm going to be you know, in a pharmacy student soon. I got that for my friend. I already have it up on this shelf, but I like to put it up, uh, you know, more prominently on a shelf. Uh, maybe put my, my uh, a few of my model plane collection that I that I had up on a shelf. Um, you know, I need to replace my high school diploma with my college diploma, stuff like that. So I'm planning a massive redo of this room. But I don't know when that's going to take place. So I might as well show you how it is now. If I do renovate it, I'll show you what it looks like after. Um, like I said, I have plushies and stuffed animals and stuff around, which is fine. But, you know, I am 22 now and this is kind of my, you know, not kind of, this is my home. And uh, I'd like to sort of modernize it and make it more, um, you know, more of a man's room instead of a little boy's room. So, um, but I'll be doing that. I also filmed the video that I talked about where I go down and do a detailed list of all the parts in this gaming PC. Down here I read out all the parts, give some specs and prices on that stuff and that might be even more relevant now that you hear me say yeah this PC runs Bioshock Infinite Ultra settings 1080p 60 frames a second then you might be more peaked and say man maybe I'd like to actually build that gaming computer for, uh, for $1200. Well I have all the information for you in that video. I filmed it I just got to pick a good time to upload it where I'll get some exposure uh, or where the video will get some exposure. So that's pretty much that. My camera I know is running low on battery and it might die at any second. But um, just do a quick recap and if I get cut off there's nothing really that important. I'm just recapping. This week there's going to be more Dark Souls 2 uploading. Um, there may be some Mario Kart footage from when Dave visits on Tuesday. Um, there will probably be a couple of vlogs here and there, again, like the computer uh, video, computer parts video, and uh, possibly a room tour. I actually need to pick up some stuff and clean the place up a little bit before I actually do a room tour. Um, and uh, and that's going to be this week, and then next week we'll we'll figure out what we're going to do. I'll still be uploading Dark Souls 2, I guess, and, uh, and maybe potentially playing Valiant Hearts, the new uh, game from UbiArt. So we'll have to see, but um, that's the deal. Um, and good luck to the USA playing against Germany on Thursday. Um, hopefully we're able to get through to the next round. And that's, uh, that's all I got for you this week, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I am Voodoo. And until next time, peace out. Oh, excuse me. Peace out. <laughs>